I can't believe that I'm allowed to use this and this is the amount of training I get. Oh, this is gonna be so fun. Back of the bucket against the tree and crunch. Oh, that was a little unexpected. Whoa. Oh, oh gosh. What day is it? Oh my goodness, I think it's demo day. <laughs> it's demo day. But seriously, today marks the first day of working on our huge project of the summer, which is going full circle back to the beginning of the road that we worked on at the beginning of last summer. We are gonna fix the steep hill once and for all because I am done sliding down it in winter. This time we're armed with a better plan, more help, and a lot more equipment. Step one is just to get all the equipment over there. Tyler's in the skid steer, I'm gonna hop on the excavator, but then we're gonna need a way to get back. I have been waiting all winter for this and the time is finally here. Tyler dropped off the skid steer. Now he's headed back to get the rest of the stuff and I'm gonna keep on my long, slow journey in the excavator to get it over to the job site. See you in a minute. Let the fun begin. So this is the section of the road that you saw us working on at the very beginning of last summer. And this is not on our property. This is on our neighbor's property, but we have a road easement through this section. We've spent a lot of time over the last year working with our neighbors to come up with a concise, good plan on how to build a reasonable road through here within this road easement. He's saved us a lot of labor by doing the logging for us, but now we have a lot of cleanup to do. So thanks for the help, neighbor. That's what makes those dead birches so dangerous. The army truck proves its value yet again. First load of logs destined for the sawmill. Oh, almost fell. I am a little worried about its ability to dump those logs though. We'll find out. That truck is so awesome. Tyler, what are your thoughts on the skid steer and the grapple? Oh, it's awesome. It's so much fun. You can grab whatever I want, flip it over, throw it, whatever. We got so much done today. Way more than I expected to get done. Successful first day. Thanks for the help, Tyler. Yep. We're gonna get some dinner and we'll see you guys tomorrow. I am so excited. Guys, today is the day. The excavator is here. I've never done this before. Ever? You're lying. <laughs> I can't believe that I'm allowed to use this and this is the amount of training I get. Oh, this is gonna be so fun. So what does this lever do? Uh, that's your outer stick. I'm just kidding. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I went into panic mode. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm like, oh boy. Oh man, this thing is smooth. So theoretically, you should be able to pick her up. She's all good. All righty. is fast like fast and smooth this is gonna be awesome that's it it's ours it's all mine now time to head up the hill that doesn't work oh I didn't have it locked in okay try again oh and it has a camera 
I'm going to try to keep the tracks like on the center of the road where nobody drives and just on the shoulder where nobody drives so I don't tear up the road too bad. Sorry neighbors. Might have to come back down here later and <laughs> smooth things out a bit. Rabbit. Whoa! Now we're moving. Oh my goodness, you guys. I can hear the excavator coming. Baby Ollie and I are waiting at the top of the hill for the boys. I have not seen this excavator yet. I've been told it's massive, but I feel like the words don't do it justice and I cannot wait to see how giant this thing is. I'm really hoping that I have some time to operate it because I can't let Riley have all of the fun. The tracks are now wider than the road. I'm hanging off the edge on both sides. It keeps getting louder. I keep thinking it's gonna turn the corner and be right there. Oh my goodness. I can't believe that we're just allowed to have this thing. That's a fun surprise to see when I come around the turn. It's gonna be a fun summer. Having the Reese family here to spend time with us, hang out with Oliver and Courtney, operating heavy equipment. You guys, two years ago, we'd never been in a piece of equipment before in our lives. And now we have this thing. I love our life. Casey, they're letting us just use this? I know. They let you take this? Not even five minutes of training and it's ours. I mean, it doesn't look big until I stand next to it. <laughs> You're tiny. This is the mountain that Tyler and I made yesterday. I mean, this is kind of as concise as he can get it with the skid steer. I think while we've got the machine down here, we're gonna get this slash pile restacked to make more room because we still have a lot more trees to take down. crazy it's like it is so fast and so powerful just breaks the trees I'm pretty sure I was picking up entire dump truck loads of material and stacking them we're gonna get a lot done with this thing Tyler what are your thoughts on the excavator it's big it's gonna get a lot of work done just lift up the whole pile like it was nothing so you guys are probably wondering why we're doing this massive road project last winter things got interesting and frankly this road was unsafe we slid all the way down it sideways once in courtney's car i'm currently plowing the steep part of our road the further i came down the more and more i got sucked into this ditch and now i'm stuck and now with all over here, I think we really have a responsibility to make this road a lot safer. We're gonna walk you through the road, what we've done and what we're gonna plan to do with this massive equipment. So let's go check it out. <laughs> I'm laughing about dragging these rocks down the hill with our little excavator and stacking them up to try to make a more fill fit in here. This was probably the funniest moment of building the road, but also the most frustrating. This is when we attempted to hang a regular jackhammer off the bucket of the excavator with Courtney operating the excavator and me holding onto the jackhammer to break this rock out. So that's sort of where the inspiration of getting the rock hammer on the 330 came in because we realized to get a road in here that we want to build, we're gonna need to be able to move this rock. And you guys might recognize this spot. This is where I broke the front glass on our mini excavator. I was digging above, trying to pull out a stump. The stump ripped in half and I held on to half of it and the other half came through the windshield into the cab with me. I was fine, but that was a moment where I really realized that that excavator just wasn't big enough for the job. I'm sorry, and I'm glad you're okay. <laughs> A lot of you have asked, well, how steep is your road? This section of the road is 22%, which means that for every 100 feet of distance, it climbs 22 feet, which might not sound like a lot, but our local fire department actually gives a recommendation of no more than 12% maximum grade for their fire trucks to be able to get up it. The steepness of this hill really does not show up on camera, but in winter, several of the times that we had to do vehicle recoveries on this hill, we couldn't walk up it. Oh my gosh, I'm winded. You're carrying two. <laughs> and this is the top of the hill and I'm too winded to tell you about it. Last summer, I spent a lot of time up here with our Kubota mini excavator, 
trying to break this rock up to get the top of the hill down a little bit. And this is as far as I could get. I've even pushed on this rock with our bulldozer and it's not gonna budge. So here's the plan. Currently, it's about 500 feet of distance from the bottom to the top. And we need to get this closer to 700 or even 750 feet of distance to get to the grade that we need. So what we're gonna do is widen this top turn way out and start digging down here. We're gonna take all of this fill and put it down at the bottom of the hill. Then the turn right in the middle, we're gonna widen it as well. That should get us the distance we need. This is gonna become the fill that we need for the bottom. And hopefully by the end of the summer, we have a road that works. Yep, I think we have something like 50 to 100,000 yards of dirt to move. It's a lot of dirt. This is not a little project. Wish us luck. It's just like the Kubota or the Hitachi, just everything's bigger. So I can do the same thing just with bigger trees and I can reach further and I can crush stuff. This is so cool. If you're anything like me, your ratchet straps probably look a little something like this. A giant tangled ball where I never seem to quite have the right strap for the job. But then two years ago, we discovered the Strapino retractable ratchet straps. And I'm not gonna lie, these seemed a little gimmicky at first, but two years later, and they're still my go-to ratchet strap for almost every situation. The retractable design keeps the slack tucked away nicely when you're going down the road. And when you go to store them, it makes for a neat and tidy package. Their lightweight one inch straps are my go-to for smaller loads, while the beefier straps keep my heavy loads secure. And as if things couldn't get any easier, Strapino just sent me their new ATV wheel chalk tie down kit. This kit makes adding custom ATV tie downs to any truck or trailer extremely easy. And it makes tying down our ATV even faster. And something that I really like about this kit is that when we're not strapping the ATV down, we can keep the straps inside the truck and out of the weather, but leave the chalks securely on the trailer. The Strapino straps are so easy to use, they make a great gift. My dad actually got my mom a set for Christmas and she uses them all the time. So if you'd like to simplify your strap game and eliminate a little frustration from your lives, head to the link in the description below. And thanks again to Strapino for sponsoring this video and keeping all of our things secure. And now we're gonna have a little fun with this. I'm gonna strap a whole bunch of stuff down to this trailer using our new straps and we're gonna take it out to the official ratchet strap test track, also known as our driveway. That was a wild ride. Let's go check the load. Gas cans, check. E-bike, check. ATV, check. Cooler, check. And water tank. There you have it. Not only are they extremely easy to use, but they also work well. So I know that earlier I said that the steep sections were 22% grade, but this machine has grade control, and according to the grade control, we actually have 27% grade in a few spots. All right, first attempt at pulling stumps with the 330. Woo. Oh, I caught a root. Oh, oh gosh. Oh yeah, okay, well, there we go. That stump probably would have taken me a couple of hours with the mini excavator. And what did that take? Maybe two minutes, not even two minutes. Okay, here we go. As high as we can and then drop. That's way up there. <laughs> all right, the goal right now is to knock as much of the dirt off of this so that we don't put all that dirt 
in the slash pile. It also makes the stump lighter and it'll make it easier for us to move it. Probably in the army truck later. Let's see what it does on this cedar stump. <laughs> you see the water squirt out of that stump? Did I just break that in half? All right, here we go. Time to push some trees over. All right, so all we have to do, back of the bucket against the tree and crunch. Oh, well, it actually just broke that one. That was a little unexpected. Okay, here we go. Another tree, maybe we'll just do two. Might as well. There we go, there goes two trees. Two trees! Which tree? Oops, did I, did I knock that tree over? That was an accident. Pretty much all of the trees that have value, we're trying to make good use of. And so as you saw yesterday, my neighbor had come through and logged it of anything that would be make good lumber, and we set that off to the side to get milled. And now anything that's good for firewood, we're also setting that off to the side. So this fir tree I just took down, he's actually gonna come while we're on lunch, buck that up into firewood, get it out of our way, and we're gonna keep making progress. A lot of the smaller cedar trees don't have a lot of value to us because one, they don't make good firewood, and then two, they're not big enough to turn into lumber. Well, we've been back from lunch for a few hours and we are making a lot of progress. I'm in the big 330 knocking down trees. Tyler is in the Hitachi. He's loading the slash into the dump truck. I think by the end of the day, we're gonna have all the tree work done, which is crazy because I was estimating like four days to a week for this part of the project. Good morning, day two with the Cat 330. I think we're just about done with the tree work and getting all the vegetation cleared out. And then it's hammer time. Now that I'm a little more acquainted with this machine, I thought I'd give you a little tour while we let it warm up. First off, it has an air ride seat. I can pump up and down the seat depending on my comfort level for how squishy I want it. There's also about a hundred other adjustments. Over here I've got a seat heater option. Over here on this super fancy control panel, I can control all of the aspects of the touch screen so that if I don't wanna to have to reach over and touch the screen, I can just control it from right here. We have a backup camera that lets me see behind me, a side view camera that lets me see what's going on on that side of the machine. We have Bluetooth audio, so I'm able to get my phone hooked up. There's also auto air conditioning. I just set a temperature, hit a button, and it keeps this thing climate controlled and cool all day long. But mostly what I'm impressed by is that it's just so smooth and so powerful. Let's get to work. Right as we finished loading the truck, it died. I'm pretty sure it ran out of diesel. Probably on the steep hill, the pickup is not sucking fuel anymore. Okay, I just remembered that there is a primer pump. Okay, go ahead and try to start it. Keep, just keep going. Let's go see what's going on now. A 
attempt number, I don't know how many to get the truck started. Oh, there's the guy that ran it out of fuel. Who broke my truck? Everyone, this is Sebastian. <laughs> Sebastian, say hi to everyone. Hi. He's a friend of ours that's visiting from Switzerland at the moment and he's been driving this truck. This might be a terrible idea, but we're gonna try to get it down to level ground and get this thing primed. Luckily with air brakes, I still have power brakes, but I don't have power steering. I think that the primer is not working because the more and more we pump on this thing, nothing's happening. I think that worked. I don't know, do you want to try cranking it now with that open? I'd also like to give a huge thanks to some other neighbors for letting us use this big clearing to stack up all the slash. This is gonna have to stay here until the fall when it's safe to burn. It's just too dry already. If you visit Ambition Strikes, you get put to work. Now Sebastian's in the dump truck. He's gonna go dump this load. I might have overfilled it. Uh oh. Tyler, tell us what happened. I might have broke it uh, driving it and it just stopped uh, turning. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's this right here. Hydraulic hose got cut on whatever this is. Oh man, things were going so well until they weren't. The skid steer blew a main hydraulic line on the drive, so it's out of commission. The Hitachi excavator, it keeps overheating and then we have to shut it off for an hour, let it cool down, and then we can use it for another hour. And I really want to be working on the road, but it looks like we're gonna spend the next few days working on the equipment instead. That's all we have time for in this video. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe because we've got a lot more awesome content coming your way. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. It's totally working. That rock is getting blown out of there. It sort of feels like we found the key to unlocking this project.